I'm Mary Polchenanoff and welcome to Shore Things. When I originally started the program, my goal was to reach out to community resources to come on and inform the public about all their services. I'm very excited today to welcome our resource today. Today I welcome Michelle Puzo. Hi Michelle. Hello. Founder and president of UR Community Cares. Thank you for having me today. I am so thrilled to, that you can come on and tell us about your work and your program. Um, again, as I looked and researched some of your work and thought about people in the community and services that I've already reviewed, but this service is also so pertinent and relevant to our community. So uh, I'll let you tell us about it. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Yeah. I'm really excited to be here. And, and what, what we realized is, uh, as a healthcare professional over the last 20 years, people needed more resources. Yeah. The aging society, more and more people need help. And that's why we, we decided yourcommunitycares.org would be a great benefit to those people that need help. So we created a nonprofit that's an online platform for people to find volunteers that can help them directly at their house. How did you even, I'm, I'm so curious with your background, how did you even, because you're, you're, you founded this program with someone, mm -hmm. how did this even come up that you took that initiative to say, hey, here's a missing area, let's tap into it? How did that even happen? Well, I was going to um, do physical therapy in people's homes, mm -hmm. and I realized when I would be walking people on the street, neighbors would come out and say, you know, oh, I would have helped you if I knew. And I thought, well, if there was a way to connect these two people on the same street. Let's figure that out. So that's where I went to MD Birmingham, our other co-founder, who um, really, we, we realized we need to have an innovative approach to community uh, connections. And that's where we decided not to have a phone call, phone tree type of system, but to have the website that directly links neighbors to neighbors. Um, and this co-founder, the person that you did, they also did they have that type of background? You have physical therapy. Did they have a helping type background? MD, he okay. actually yeah. um, he went to UConn. Mm -hmm. He um, was going to become a teacher, and he had a, a motor vehicle accident okay. that um, left him with a traumatic brain injury and a spinal cord injury. So he had to kind of recreate mm -hmm. himself and become an entrepreneur. And oh, wow. that's where he realized those people that need help at home, he could really sympathize and wanted to help those people knowing from his experience how much help his family had to give him um, during his recovery period. And not everybody has a family that is that supportive. True. So we know a lot of patients are coming out of hospitals and rehabs and need additional resources. Right. Um, now, you're, how long has your organization been up and running? The website um, went live in June of 2019. That was only about six months prior to COVID-19. Oh, yes. So we were only, uh, we're a little over two years old. Mm -hmm. But like everything else, the last two years has been very, very challenging. A lot, of, a lot of things have had to change their focus and mm. a lot of organizations. So when you got up and running and you're going to offer this service to neighbors and communities, do you have a certain regional area that you're focusing on? So right now we're limiting our um, website use to Connecticut only. Mm -hmm. So we have right now participants in over 100 towns in Connecticut. So the word is wow. spreading. Um, we know that the need is there. We know many volunteers want to give back in their community. Mm -hmm. And this allows that flexibility so that a volunteer can sign up when they're out of work, on the weekend, after work. Um, people that are retired can you know, give back during the day, it really is targeted to make it convenient for volunteers. for volunteers. Did you base it on any other model? I'm just so curious because, again, looking at your website, you have policies, procedures, training, you have everything on there. Did you research or base it on another model? Well, we're working with the pro bono um, lawyers in mm -hmm. Hartford, so that has been a great resource for us to have pro bono professionals helping us guide us along yeah. this journey. Um, but no, we just, everything MD and I just created ourselves with the support of additional lawyers. Mm -hmm. 
Did you, um, you know, I've had a few senior centers on mm -hmm. to talk about resources and services. And of course, during the pandemic, the hard part was getting, people couldn't go there, they were closed. Yep. Um, and then even in generally, it was a transportation issue in some, in some cases, getting uh, some of the members of the community to get to the, to get to the center itself. Did you uh, survey or ask any of their input as far as what they saw as needs in communities or? Definitely, yep. yeah. We've been working recently with a, now that they're reopening, we're able to go and do presentations and really offer our support to, to people. And that's where in early 2020, we realized after we had initially um, launched our website with a one-to-one -one connection that you could sign up as a volunteer, I could sign up as the community member that needed help. But in 2020, we realized that a senior center or a social worker um, might want to sign up people that don't have access to the internet. Right. And right. we okay. opened up the opportunity for a group enrollment. So now a senior center can enroll a group of people. We know technology is a, is a limiting factor for some people. Sure. The internet is expensive, the devices are expensive, and some people... It can be um, confusing. It can be confusing yeah. for, other pe for other people as well. Yeah. So what clientele, what is your customer base? What, what are the parameters for people that take advantage of you, that can use your services? So any community members that are over the age of 18 with a disability, so mm -hmm. that their mobility is limited functionally, they can't do the chores that they used to do around the house, or they're over the age of 70. So we're kind of in two categories because we realize anybody that's over the age of 70 could have arthritis that's limiting them, um, but anybody over the age of 18 that's coming out of a hospital or a rehab, a woman after a C-section, any temporary disability also qualifies. And for these services, so as you mentioned, somebody perhaps coming out of rehab or the hospital that needs some services mm -hmm. to branch as they recover, and there's no insurance involved. This is or right. So the volunt yeah. we're fully insured yeah. um, as an organization, but it is completely free to the participants, which is why we're working with um, a couple municipal. Um, towns right now that have put us in their human services budget. So now we're able to receive some funding from the town of Manchester and the town of Bolton, which is a great starting point of being so new as an organization. They realize the benefits of their um, demographic in need that we can directly help those people at their homes. Where the senior center, they go to the senior right, center. Right. And the, the difference is, is that we bring people, connect right. them to volunteers at their house. And I know some senior, se senior centers might also have the visiting nurse coming in and doing mm -hmm. some of the, some services inside the house. But as you said, some of the services you offer, that wouldn't be the case. So what are some of the services you offer for the community? So volunteers mm -hmm. can help with housework, mm -hmm. yard work, transportation, and companionship. So if, you know, for example, a person was recovering from something um, or had a permanent um, injury in some way, they couldn't take the trash barrels out. So they could put in, they could schedule on a weekly basis, trash cans coming in and out. The next week they had a doctor's appointment, they could schedule transportation. The community member, it's sort of like um, ordering a pizza. You know, we mm -hmm. really have made it really easy for them to just log in on the website, schedule those uh, chores that they need help with, and then an email goes out to all the volunteers within 15 miles of that person's house so that the volunteer can then see, okay, well, this person needs help. Oh, I'm not available, um, and they won't accept it, but then another volunteer that might be within that same 15 miles will go in and hopefully accept what it. What an interesting platform. I was wondering how that was working because I wondered as a volunteer, do you have to commit to a certain individual or a certain chore? But it sounds like it could almost be on a weekly or daily basis. You go in and say, what's available? I have time. Yep. I can go do this for somebody. Yeah, we've really tried to make it flexible for the volunteers mm -hmm. that they're able to do it at their leisure. But the community member, if they've really created a bond with someone, they will write in, request Mary or request Michelle. And, they would. Um, and then that person knows, or the other volunteers know not to choose that. Do you notice that happening? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah. Do. yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of people that are really finding a friendship 
out of this, which is great that the companionship really is is strong. So how many, um, and I, I, I know I'm looking for the community members, mm -hmm. those are the, we would say community members are the people that are getting served, right? right? They're getting the service. So how many community members would you say at this point you have involved? We have about almost mm -hmm. 300, almost. 300, or throughout yeah. the state? Yep, throughout the state. And volunteers, it's probably hard to number the, have a number. About 350, I would say, for the volunteers. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely increasing our, um, our numbers, even through COVID, which was amazing, that when people were laid off and they were home and they really realized that they, the community impact that they could have, it was, it was really nice to see. You were able see. to keep it up and going, mm -hmm. even during COVID. Um, yeah, I, I wonder, there might have been some people that were hesitant to have people go in because of COVID too? There were all kinds of opportunities like dropping food off from the okay. food pantry, delivering groceries, yard work. There's so many more things that people can do that's not just a close contact. It could be, you know, they, they need their laundry done and can't go to the laundromat. Somebody would pick it up at the front door, bring it home wash it and drop it back off. Amazing. There's all kinds of... Um, and as far as when you mentioned transportation, so they could, if somebody needed a doctor's appointment or needed, they could ha actually help out with dr the drive and everything. Transportation, yep. Transportation. Is there any kind of extra coverage for that? So yeah, we have automobile mm -hmm. insurance. Yeah. And also we do a driving history. So all the participants that are enrolled on our platform mm -hmm. are background checked. And anyone who wants to do transportation also has a driving history. Um, okay. So when check. you say participants are back checked, those are the volunteers? Both community members and oh, volunteers. Well, and the community yeah. members. The only people that are not background checked is if you were to go into a group volunteer. So say a church group, they brought mm -hmm. 10 people. Um, the administrator of the church would be background checked and they're liable, you know, to, to watch over those, those people. Or if, um, okay. you know, an insurance company state farm insurance or any insurance company wanted to do a community day with their employees, mm -hmm. we wouldn't background check every single employee. We would we would background check the, the administrator the of that. Okay, great. Oh, good. Okay, well, we're going to so, take a short break at this time. When we come back, we're going to learn more about the UR Community Cares, and you'll also get to see some pictures from the services. We'll be right back. Thank you, Connecticut, for doing your part to stop the spread of COVID-19, for wearing your masks, washing your hands, and keeping your distance. So keep it up, Connecticut. We've come too far to go back. Community TV, your neighborhood TV. Publicly funded and a reliable partner for cable companies nationwide, it provides transparent coverage of local and state government, education, and public programming. A digital town green that can be watched anywhere, anytime and on any device watch us on today's high-tech distribution methods community tv in connecticut local unfiltered reliable and, and yours. yours hi welcome back i'm here today with michelle puzo from you are community cares welcome back thanks for having me yeah so before the break we were talking a bit about the structure of the organization this amazing community resource which is which is awesome um, I did want to ask, we're here in Westbrook, and you're based in... Manchester. You're in Manchester. That's where the headquarters is. Yep. That's where your headquarters is, right. Um, and we're talking about this amazing platform where people can actually look and sign up to have services, mm -hmm. shopping, yard work, transportation, which is awesome, and volunteers can go in. Reminds me a little bit of what FoodShare does. We do a little bit of that with FoodShare. But who is your techie mindset? Who, who set up this whole platform? So our co-founder, MD Birmingham, okay. um, he worked very closely with the web developer who designed the um, custom-made website that we have. Mm -hmm. So it's a very um, innovative approach to being a nonprofit. You know, okay. we're really a yeah. technology, we're a software company, 
and we right now are working with Infosys, which is a very large um, website developer, and they are going to be relaunching our website with a host of new features in the upcoming months. So oh we're really excited for the expansion of our website in the next couple of months. That's going to be awesome. Well, you, now you did provide us with a few pictures, so we are going to cut away just briefly and look at some of the pictures, and then maybe we can talk about them. If you wanna these that, are so these are some members? Yep, yep. that's M D on the left. Yep. He's working, he's playing chess with one of our community members. We all go out and do volunteer work and accept community deeds. Pam on the left is one of our oldest volunteers. She's been with us almost since the beginning and she's volunteering all around town. She's she's an amazing person. We're so grateful. There she is teaching technology. Sometimes she's doing yard work. Sometimes she's boxing up people's house to do a big move. She really will do whatever people need help with. She's amazing. This is Sue. Um, Susan on the left is one of our oldest community members. And Sally was helping her again box up. She did a big move of living in her home for over 30 years and the Pam and Sally helped for weeks to get her moved. Wow. And we are 100% volunteer. Yeah. Donna, yeah. she is our grant writer. She also goes out and does some <laughs> deeds, some yard work. Um, but she has been a mm -hmm. force that has driven us to be able to be successful in our grants over the last two years. That is awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. So you must be very proud to to share those those as well. How long did it take you from your idea to actually get that website up and going to get the whole process started? Did it only about five months. Five months. Yep. You must be you were driven. Yes. You and M D were driven to Definitely. get that much done. We um, have a and, and we're we're so excited to be supported by so many pro bono professionals that are helping us uh, because we're one hundred percent volunteer. This yes. is an amazing uh, effort to be statewide and to have so many people involved. We have Maturity Works, which is a 55 um, mm -hmm. plus employees that are now working with us. We have four of employees that are, um, it's just amazing. It, it's yeah. really, we're really grateful for all the support because yeah. people realize the yeah. needs and this demographic of people that are paying for taxes yeah. can't get to the senior center, they're home and they need help and this is a way that they can receive some help at home. Can we talk more about your partners? Because you mentioned, uh, what, type, what other partners might you have? Do you have involved? So we, um, we're working with, right here in Clinton. So the Clinton uh, Police Department, they are training their auxiliary volunteers. Human Services in Clinton is referring community members that need help. So the volunteers are going to be it's like walking into a town that already has 20 volunteers ready to go. Right. So now Human Services is now um, enrolling those people that need the help. So this is called Clinton Community Assistance Team. And the funding for it came from the Clinton Families Helping Families. So it's a nonprofit that has donated to cover the background checks and that's our oh, big, biggest that's big expense. expense. That's a big expense. Yep. So you went right through the police station, the Clinton police station. Yep. So any town um, in Connecticut could kind of take this on, it sounds Definitely. like. Definitely. They could say if they had a, an economic or development for community service approach going on, they could take this on. Yes. Senior centers, so you're saying senior centers could promote it. Yes. Give out your flyer, your information to say, you know, maybe you didn't qualify for this type of benefit, but here's Here's some assistance. What right. type? What type of training do your volunteers get or receive? Do they get any training from? Your we have the policies and procedures, yeah. but the things mm -hmm. that they're doing are basic everyday chores. Okay. They're going to somebody's house to vacuum or to organize or to do the laundry. You know, it, it doesn't really take any training. And hopefully, in time, as we're growing and ha as we have staff, we'll be able mm -hmm. to develop some of our own training. But what they wanted to do in Clinton um, from the police department is educate them if if you saw somebody that had um, cognitive changes mm -hmm. this is what you do call us call 911 um, and really okay. be an advocate for people and, and that's where we really do try to have the volunteers let us know if the person can't do stairs anymore 
we'll refer them to a ramp company that can help them. Um, there's all kinds of ways that we can help kind of be like the old yellow pages. That sure, we can and you're the connector because yeah. you know of the network of resources available that you can hook them into. Yep. And I know we talked earlier, you said this is not your full-time job. It's hard yep. to believe. Yep, it's just, uh, it's such a passion of mine because MD and I really believe in and improving mm. the communities. Yeah. And this is a, a great way for people to get involved, whether you're in high school, anyone over the age of 15 can volunteer. Mm -hmm. So whether you're in high school and need community service, you're in college, you're retired or you're middle-aged, um, anybody can make a positive impact in their own community. And that's so important. I think the process, um, as you said, seems pretty seamless. I know there's the back background checks, which can take time, it t mm -hmm. I understand, but there are so many people, you know, uh, in the retirement community that are looking to do something, perhaps not commit to, you know, five days a week or four days, you know, right. so this sounds like something that they could actually pick an area, as you said, yard work or cleaning or transportation, and make that contribution and feel good about that. Yep, and the Which other is option is companionship, and some people do it virtually from home. So they will call somebody um, once a week to have a phone call, or they could have a Zoom call. There's, It's just been amazing to see how people are connecting, and, and we're just... Wow, so you, just, you do have uh, community members that might just ask for that service. I yeah. just want someone to check in. I just want to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a retired lawyer that she is, you know, physically now disabled mm -hmm. and, and can't leave her home. And so we have Donna, who um, we showed as our advisor who does our grant writing, but she calls her every week. They set a time and they just have an hour conversation about what's going on in her life. And they just chat. Yeah, and so now they've really become friends and she ended up, unfortunately, back at a rehab and mm -hmm. Donna tracked her down and found her and, and talked her through until she got home and, and it's just... Well, Great the, friendships. Actually, the connections must yeah. be amazing on that. It is. So we talk, we talk about the people that, that utilize the services as community members, and then you have the volunteers. Mm -hmm. And the partners sound like those organizations that are supportive and in some way contributing. So an, uh, an ex <coughs> another example would be the Hartford Healthcare. So okay. they're um, one of their case managers. She now, I think she has enrolled 15 or 20 people that don't have access to the internet across the state. So she, once a month, will contact them, see what's going on in their life, see what they need, put in those requests. And it's not that we can do every single one of these because there's not always a volunteer that's available. Uh, but she continues to put in those requests because she knows we're getting more and more volunteers all the time. Sure. So do you, as part of your charge, do you go to the senior centers and, and, and talk and Yep. Yeah, last and week that? we were in Hartford. Okay. Um, next month we'll be in, um, in Waterbury. We received a grant from the Connecticut Community Foundation, so we're really focusing on the Waterbury and Litchfield Hills area nice. um, to try to get more outreach. And programs like this is a is a great way for us to get the word out that we exist because we don't. I, uh, I that it's amazing. I'm not even sure. As I said, I'm not even sure how I came across it, except yeah. that I was researching nonprofits. So uh, it's such a find um, in order to get that word out. It's so important right now. I mean, last week I got a call from a New Haven um, police officer that she kind of has become the surrogate uh, yeah. daughter to this person that really needs more help. So people are finding out about us all across the state and we're, we're excited to um, continue to, to help people because at the end of the day, that's what they need is help. They do, and, and the community is the best place, right? Right in the community. So let's talk about the hero part, the community hero. What, what was that? So. Uh, um, uh, hometown hero hometown, is, yeah. is what we're looking for mm -hmm. in the town of um, Westbrook and, and all the towns in Connecticut to really find the one person that wants to do more outreach and to help us as a volunteer mm -hmm. to connect us throughout the town. So if they were to hang up our flyer at churches or hang up our flyer and create a restaurant fundraiser, those types of things, that that person really has a pulse on that town and can help us figure out who are the right people to um, reach out to that town. Housing authorities, you know, they might know the people that we need to speak yeah. to. Even the, even I, I know for Westbrook, even some of our town committees, yeah. they're amazing and they're very connected into the community. So perhaps through this show, you will get your hometown hero from Westbrook, I hope. Wouldn't that that be? would be great. That would be great. Do you have any other big plans for the future, big goals? 
I mean, you have the expansion of your website, which well, is big. Right, and so we mm -hmm. really would like to become a national nonprofit that helps support this population in need. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for corporate sponsors okay. that would be able to um, you know, help support us so we can grow to staff. We could be acquired by a, um, some a business that is a for-profit business that's looking to have a foundation, mm -hmm. that we could become their foundation. There's a lot of opportunities for growth. Oh, well, well, great. Well, I'm thrilled that you came on today, Michelle. That was that was really wonderful. And I know we have your uh, information for your website up so yes. that people people can get in touch and, and learn more about your, yep. all the services you provide because I just can think of people off the top of my head that could use that, which would be wonderful. Yeah, um, anybody yeah. can get in touch with us with yourcommunitycares.org or give us a call. And for those people that don't have access to the Internet, we can enroll them. And you could enroll them right, yep. right there, and yep. maybe and good. And this is a good, you know, too. Senior centers listening to this to get in touch with you and and help you support support you that way too would be wonderful. We've had so much support from the Hartford Foundation for yeah. Public Giving, and we're so grateful that um, the support we've received over the last two years. Right. And we know yeah. um, we're just excited right. to get get your your time. So good. thank you to, oh, for today. And I'm thrilled. Thank you, and I hope this helps your organization you. support. Uh, what thank needs you. to happen for the community members, so thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's program, and I am thrilled that we have such resource available for our community members, so that's wonderful. If you have any feedback or questions, please let me know at surethingct at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, take care.